Today I'm going to show you how to create your own blockchain game. And I'm super excited because this is the first time I've ever done a gaming tutorial on my channel. But right now is the perfect time because blockchain gaming is really starting to take off. And I'm going to show you how to jump on that trend and create your own game today. All right, I'll show you everything step by step. How to create Ethereum smart contracts with the Solidity programming language, how to write tests for them, put them on a blockchain, and then also how to create a client-side app that will let users play the game and interact with your smart contracts. But don't worry, you don't have to be an experienced programmer or really know anything about blockchain to get started today. I'll show you everything step by step. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. Here's a demo of the app that we're going to build today. This is a blockchain based memory game where you try to find matches. And as soon as you find the matches, you get to keep them forever on the blockchain. That's because each of these tiles is represented by a blockchain based token. So whenever you find the tokens and you match them, you get to keep them in your wallet. And then these tokens can be transferred outside of the game because they live forever on the blockchain and you can sell them on a marketplace, keep them as collectibles, whatever. This app is inspired by a tutorial by Anya Kubo, who's another JavaScript YouTuber. So full credit to her for originally making this tutorial i'll put a link to her channel down in the description below but i've taken this and adapted it for blockchain and also for modern web development with react.js here's a quick diagram of how the application is going to work that we're going to build all right so first and foremost we're going to use our web browser and talk to a client side website this is where most of the logic for the memory game is going to live we're going to write this game in JavaScript and we're going to do do it in React.js, okay? And then when we match the tokens in the memory game, we'll actually create new tokens on the blockchain, all right? That's where the tokens are going to get saved whenever we find them. And these tokens are powered by Ethereum smart contracts, which is going to act like the business logic for transferring the tokens and, you know, governing the token ownership. And then the ledger of people who own the tokens are going to live on the blockchain as well. It's going to act like our backend database in this tutorial. And then, of course, once they're on the public ledger of the blockchain, they can be sent to any other blockchain wallet, you know, sold at a marketplace, et cetera, et cetera. And really quickly, let's talk about the tokens in this tutorial. So the kind of token that we're going to build step by step is not a money. It's, it's different. It's called a non-fungible token. So you might have heard about this with digital collectibles like CryptoKitties, for example. This is a really popular topic in the blockchain chain space right now. So that's what the tokens are going to be in our tutorial. They're going to be memory tokens that are collectibles that we win by playing this blockchain based game. And then we can hold on to these tokens, you know, collect them, sell them, whatever. Let me further explain this difference so that it makes sense. So the token we're creating is a non-fungible token, and that's different from a fungible token. So you might think of fungible tokens like cryptocurrencies. So these are examples of, you know, tokens that represent money. So let's take a token, for example, let's just see, uh, like the Uniswap token, Uni. Every Uni token is worth the same as every other Uni token. You can swap one Uni token for a different Uni token and it's worth the exact same. That's what a fungible token is. And this works really well for money. So non-fungible tokens mean that tokens aren't necessarily worth the same. So each token is unique. These tokens are not unique. These tokens are unique. That's why they work as collectibles. So for an example, uh, you know, one token might become rare and therefore worth more than another token. And that's an example of non-fungible tokens. And that's exactly the type of token that we're going to create in this video. So we're going to use the ERC721 standard. You might have heard of the ERC20 standard for Ethereum-based tokens. That's what these are. These are all ERC20 tokens. Well, ERC721 is just the standard for non-fungible tokens. So it basically just describes the types of functions uh, and events that a token must implement. Again, this is just an Ethereum smart contract written in the Solidity programming language. And this is the description of, you know, the types of Solidity functions that have to exist, like balance of to see how many tokens the individual owns, uh, the owner of each token, the ability to send tokens like transfer from, the ability to approve tokens for other people to send them. We're going to get into all those details in this video, but that's a really quick overview of what the ERC721 standard is because that's what we're going to build in this video. Now let's install the dependencies we need for this tutorial. The first dependency is Node.js. This is going to allow us to install all the packages on our computer as well as run our client-side application. So you can see if you have Node already installed by going to your terminal and typing Node-V. So I'm using Node 9.10.0. I would recommend 
recommend using the exact same version for best uh, results during this tutorial, but you can probably use the latest version if you really want to and you know what you're doing. So uh, you can download Node directly from the website or you can use a command line tool like Homebrew, a package manager to, to install it that way. The next dependency is the Truffle framework. This is a framework for creating Ethereum smart contracts. We can write Ethereum smart contracts with the Solidity programming language, write tests against them and deploy them to a blockchain with Truffle as well as many other things which you'll see in this tutorial. You can install Truffle from your command line like this, say npm install dash dash g truffle at version uh, 5.1.39. The next dependency is the Ganache personal blockchain. This is a blockchain that will run on our computer. We can simply download it and run transactions in the blockchain, deploy smart contracts to it without having to pay any real money. So go ahead and download Ganache. You can just click the version for your operating system here. And whenever it's finished downloading, you can open it and you'll see that you have a brand new blockchain running on your computer just like this. You'll see lots of different accounts funded with 100 fake ether. And don't get too excited because this isn't actually worth anything. The last dependency is the MetaMask extension for Google Chrome. Most modern web browsers won't connect to the blockchain out of the box, and so we need to install a special browser extension to do that. That's exactly what MetaMask does. It's an Ethereum wallet that turns our browser into a blockchain browser. So go to the Google Chrome web store, find MetaMask, and click install. And once you have it installed, you should see a Fox icon in the top right-hand corner and just walk through the setup steps to get that started. All right, now let's start building the project. So instead of building out everything from scratch in the beginning, I'm gonna help us get started fast. So I've put a link down in the description below to a GitHub repository. This is gonna let us get the starter code for the app um, so we can get, get moving, all right? So type this into your terminal, say git clone dash B, all right? starter dash code so this is a specific branch on this repository so uh here's a repository link github.com forward slash happy diversity forward slash blockchain game then finally put a space after that and call the folder blockchain underscore game so don't worry if you don't understand everything about this i'll put this command down in the description below okay but just click enter and you'll see what happens all right so i'll enter into the newly created directory like this say cd blockchain game all right and you'll see the branch starter code. Um, so if you want to change to the master branch, you can, but I'll just uh, start in the starter code branch like this. So next we want to install all the dependencies. We'll just say npm install, wait for that to finish. All right, so it's done. And you might see some warnings here. Uh, don't worry about that. As long as your package is actually installed, that's all we really care about at this point. It's not ideal, but that's just the state of things. Uh, so let's clear that out. And then I'm gonna open this in a new tab here, okay? So I've got two tabs in my terminal. And on and the second one, I'm gonna start the server. We'll do it like this, we'll say npm run start. This is just the server for the client side application. Again, uh, the rest of it's going to be on the blockchain. So this is my old version. Let's just see if this loads up here. All right, there we go. That's what you should see. So here's the basic template for the app. Again, you can see that it just says edit this in app.js. So we're going to fill this out in this tutorial. So there's no game here, but this just has some basic UI ready for us. So we have to build this stuff from scratch. It has a nav bar up here with this memory tokens title, right? A nice little icon. And then a place for our Ethereum address here. And then this is where we'll actually build the game, all the interactivity, and we'll collect the tokens at the bottom. And we'll do that later in the tutorial. So I just wanted to run the server really quickly to make sure that everything was set up properly. So let's just continue on with that. Um, let's just set the project up so that we can you know, build it out for real. So the next thing we want to do is start Ganache. So this is our local blockchain and we want this running so that we can uh, you know, deploy smart contracts to it and all that kind of stuff before we start building everything out. So we'll just create a smoke test to ensure that everything works, okay? So let's go ahead and open this project in our text editor. So I'm gonna open mine in Sublime Text. Uh, you can use whatever text editor you want to. Uh, people ask me about that a lot. What does that subl dot command mean? Well, basically that's just how I open my projects in Sublime Text. It's a quick shortcut for my terminal. Uh, don't worry if you can't do that. Uh, you can always just navigate to your uh, file browser and open it manually that way if you want to. So uh, we can see inside of here that um, we have a truffle-config file. This is what configures our project to talk to the blockchain. So here's our connection to Ganache right here. 
And then if you've used Truffle before, you might notice that I set my projects up a little bit differently. I put the contracts in a different directory so they can be exposed to React.js for these tutorials. So that's the configuration here. If you're brand new, don't worry about that. But if you're, you've been around Truffle for a while, that's why I do this, okay? And so let's keep looking at the project here. So next, let's just look at the source directory, all right? There's lots of different files in here and, and directories. So uh, the first is the contracts directory. This is where the smart contracts will go. So we already have a memory token smart contract set up for us. This is where we'll write all the code for the token. We'll build this out here in a minute. Um, we have a test directory where we're going to write tests for this smart contract. And we already have a basic test set skeleton set up here as well. We'll fill out the code for this in the tutorial. And then uh, last but not least, you know, we have the client side directory. So this is where the components go for React.js. Again, React is a component-based library. We'll dig into all of that in this tutorial, but we have the basic uh, you know, markup for the front end that you see inside of here. And of course, we'll fill out this code in the tutorial and also create a lot more uh, in here as well. So let's start off with the token. All right. So this is where we're going to create the ERC721 token for you know the memory tokens that we're going to collect during this game. So um, we'll build this out you know, in this tutorial. But first, let's just create a basic test to ensure that we can uh, deploy this smart contract to the blockchain that everything's set up properly. And so let's do a couple things here. So first, I want to take out this. All right. So this is, you know, part of this different smart contract that we're going to inherit from later in this tutorial. Don't worry about that just yet. Just know that we don't want to deploy it with that on there yet. All right. So basically, we just want to say, we want to give a contract a name. This is the second thing. So we'll say string public name equals memory token. All right. So what we've just done here is created a variable inside the smart contract. This is called a state variable, which basically means that it belongs to the entire smart contract, not just a function. And it is stored on the blockchain. So it's going to be an immutable variable value. It means the variable value can't change uh, because it's on the blockchain and it's with a smart contract. So it's just going to be a string, just name, memory, token. And so that's what this means here, uh, because Solidity is a statically typed programming language, which means that whenever you declare, declare the data type, uh, you must do it like this, and then it can't change. It can't be something else, all right? It's also public, which means we can read this value outside the smart contract, which we'll see in a minute. And then it just has this uh, name here, okay? So we'll just save that, and we'll deploy it to the blockchain, and we'll try to read the value. So the next thing we need to do is tell Truffle how to put this on the blockchain. So we'll open this migration file. So go to the migrations directory, look at migration number two. This is called deploy contracts. So this is just going to be a file that tells Truffle how to move the contract onto the blockchain. That's what a migration is. So you might be familiar with migration from another programming background if you're a programmer already, maybe like a web developer or a mobile developer, anything that works with a database. Um, you know, you have to migrate a database. You basically are changing it. That's what a migration is. It moves it from one state to another. Or maybe you're moving data from one place to another. You could think about a migration that way as well. That's what this does. So we can put the smart contract in the blockchain like this. We'll go to this initial migrations file. We'll just copy this, paste it inside of here. And uh, instead of deploying migrations, we'll deploy memory token. So that's what this is here. This is just importing the memory token artifact uh, into this file. The artifact is what Truffle uses uh, whenever it you know, compiles the smart contract. It creates an artifact so that it knows how to work with it in JavaScript. Okay, uh, We'll see that in action more later. So uh, we just do deployer, deploy memory token, just save that. And then also while I'm here, I'll note that the migrations are numbered so that Truffle knows what order to run, to run them in. So the initial migration is number one, and then deploy contracts is number two, because they must be run in that order. All right. So let's go to the terminal and deploy this. We'll say Truffle migrate uh, dash dash reset. All right, I'm going to do reset for now in case you have any other smart contracts that exist in your build directory. Uh, I, I pretty much always do the reset flag for local development like this. Basically, understand that smart contracts are immutable, like they can't change. And so if you update the code to them uh, when you're developing them, you have to put new copies on the blockchain. And that's what I do whenever I do the reset flag. So we'll run truffle migrate dash dash reset to put this on the blockchain. And let's just see if it works. So it's compiling. All right. All right. And boom, there we go. 
It's put memory token on the blockchain. So now let's um, open the Truffle console to interact with it. All right, we'll say uh, Truffle console. So now we have a JavaScript uh, console where we can interact with the blockchain directly, which is pretty cool, okay? So I can actually fetch the smart contract with JavaScript inside this uh, console and we can read that variable value name. So I'll say like, uh, hmm, I'll say name or sorry, contract or token. Token equals await uh, memory token dot deployed. All right. So I'm using a wait here because this is an asynchronous function. I talk about that a lot in my other tutorials, but basically, you know, the interactions with the blockchain are asynchronous. And so if you want to get the value of this, you must use the await keyword because like, you know, just token, if you did this, then it would only return the promise, not the actual token itself. It's kind of confusing if you want a deeper explanation of that, just go look up how promises work on in JavaScript and also how async await works. So anyways, you'll see token here, it'll say undefined. Uh, that's just the logged value. That's not the returned value. So you can say token. All right, boom. And there it is. Boom. All right. So token.address. All right. So it was deployed to the blockchain. Boom. Done. And then token.name. So we'll say name equals await token.name. And then uh, call the function with the parentheses. All right. And so it'll say undefined. Again, that's just the logged value. It's not the actual returned value. Click name and then boom, there we go. Memory token, awesome. So we have successfully put a smart contract on the blockchain. It is a very simple smart contract that doesn't do very much, but now you have, um, you know, just guaranteed that everything works properly. You've, you've set up a blockchain, you've put a smart contract on it, you've written a little bit of Solidity programming language. So, you know, you've, you've taken some concrete steps to becoming a blockchain developer and building your blockchain game. So congratulations. That's the really the first step. So let's continue on with that. Okay, I'll exit the console like this. Just say dot exit. All right, clear this out. And we want to keep building out the smart contract. But what we're going to do is actually write some tests for it. So we don't want to boot up the console every single time to see if our code is correct. We want to use test driven development and not really test driven development, but we want to write tests along with the code. I think test driven is probably too hard for most people who are just starting out programming and just like learning blockchain. We want some sort of test coverage though to make sure it actually works, okay? So we won't be hardcore test driven, but we will we will write some tests, all right? It, it will make things more efficient and speed things up. So what we're gonna do is, we're not gonna write actually too much Solidity code in this tutorial, okay? Because um, we can get a lot of this for free by using the Open Zeppelin library. Let me explain why. So uh, let me just pull it up here, say open, Zeppelin ERC721. So a lot of these tokens are basically like solved problems. So for example, if you want to create an ERC721 token, um, there's no need to really reinvent the wheel. Now, that being said, if you're just learning programming from the very first, it can be helpful to like reinvent the wheel to learn things. And I actually teach you how to do that. And some of my other tutorials, I teach you how to, like, how to build a cryptocurrency from scratch. I teach that inside the blockchain bootcamp because sometimes like when you're just starting out, it really helps to build things from scratch to get a deeper understanding. Even if you are reinventing the wheel, sometimes that can be helpful for learning. But the scope of this tutorial is really just to show you how to make a game and how to use tokens. So if you wanna, if you wanna you know, build tokens step by step, you can check out those other tutorials to do that deeply. Uh, but for this tutorial, we're gonna use a template from ER, sorry, from Open Zeppelin because they have a standard uh, interface and implementation for writing ERC721 tokens. These are the you know, collectible tokens on their GitHub. So basically we can just use this. So ERC721, and they basically have a lot of the functions created already. Because remember, it's just a standard token. It works, it's supposed to work the same way for pretty much everybody. Here's the specification here. And they've basically already implemented the standard for us. All we have to do is inherit from it in our smart contract and we get all that functionality for free. So I've already included the ERC721 full uh, standard inside of here. So I did this because... I didn't want any conflicts with the open Zeppelin version. I wanted you to be able to follow this tutorial pretty easily. I didn't want to import it from the uh, NPM package or anything like that. I wanted to just put it in our project uh, so you had easy access, okay? So it's already wired up for you. 
all you need to do now is, uh, you know, put this line back in there. So basically, we say memory token is ERC721 full. So this is how you do inheritance and solidity. This is the smart contract we're going to inherit from. This is the ERC721 full here. All right. And of course, this, this inherits from every other, you know, contract inside of here. Okay. So, um, and then we import, you know, the, the file right here and say dot is the current directory. And then here's the file name. And then we inherit here. Okay. All right. So uh, let's just take this out and start over. And we can actually set the name a different way. So you can see that uh, this ERC721 has a constructor here. So this constructor is just the function that gets run whenever the smart contract is created or put on the blockchain. And it has some values we can pass in. So it actually takes a name, so string memory name, and then string memory symbol, because these tokens all have names and symbols so they can be traded on you know, marketplaces so that you know, wallets understand how they work. So we can implement this constructor into our smart contract like this. Okay, we just say constructor keyword, constructor. And then this is how we tell it that we want to give the ERC721 full arguments. I'm just gonna copy this and paste it here. And then we give it this name uh, and symbol that's required here. So name is a string and symbol is a string. And we just say memory token. And then we say memory, memory, that will be the symbol, okay? And this constructor must be public, all right? And then it's just going to be an empty function. We don't actually have to uh, implement any logic inside the constructor. We just have to implement the uh, constructor for this ERC721 full here. Okay, so um, let's just start off with that. It's a really basic implementation. Uh, we've given it a name and a symbol, a lot like this state variable name here that we read out in the console. We just assigned the name this way because that's what the uh, the template asks for. And if you want to browse this, you know you can look for name. So you can see this is the name function here inside of the uh, ERC seven twenty one metadata. It uh, actually implements a variable here, a private variable actually called name and a private variable called symbol, but they expose public functions that read these values, okay? Yeah, that's that's how it works. But we're gonna write a test for this. So tests are just automated tests that allow us to check the behavior of the smart contract. Uh, it's like what we did in the console, but it does it automatically inside JavaScript with Truffle. So go to your test directory and find this memory token.test.js file. And this is where we'll write all the code for the test. So of course I have cleared out a lot of this stuff, but um, you know, I have some boilerplate code in here so that you don't have to write all this yourself. Basically what it does is it uses memory token, right? It imports it just like we did in the migration. Uh, it, you know, creates some configuration for the test and then it uses this contract uh, function to create the test suite. So really quickly, uh, we're going to use the Mocha testing framework and the Chai assertion library. So the Mocha testing framework comes bundled uh, with Truffle, okay? So it's a JavaScript testing framework where we can write tests for the smart contracts. Mocha is a pretty popular framework. Like I said, it comes, comes with Truffle. And then we're also going to use the Chai assertion library. So Chai basically is just gonna allow us to have these matchers uh, in our tests like should, you know, expect, assert, all that kind of stuff. So those are the two main things that we're gonna use to write the tests. And you'll see that in action as we go along here. So inside the test, the first thing we want to do is let's just create the, the basic one, right? Uh, let's just say, let's write a test example like this. We can say describe uh, deployment, all right? And then I'm going to use an async function, all right? And then inside of here, we'll say it uh, deploys successfully. And then we'll say uh, async. So again, I'm using these async functions because we're going to be using the blockchain and we want to use the await keyword uh, to fetch things. So the first thing I want to do is basically like declare the token here. I'll say let token. All right. This is just going to be a variable that we can assign the token to when we fetch it back from the blockchain, just like we did in the console. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to write this exact same code that we did in the console. So let's say like, uh, say 
token equals await memory token dot deployed. Again, this is just what we did a few minutes ago in the console. So we store the value here. And then we want to check the address. All right, this is, we also did this in the console. Uh, let's just see this. All right, const address equals token address. And then we would just want to make sure that it, it exists and that it's not blank. So we'll do this, all right? So we'll say assert, that's what we do to check the, the validity in the test, to say assert dot not equal, you know, address. We don't want it to be the blank address. We don't want it to be an empty string. We don't want it to be null. We don't want it to be undefined. That's because we want to check that it's present, but we don't know what the address is going to be because you know every time we put a new smart contract in the blockchain, the address changes. So we just want to make sure that it exists, right? So uh, let's run the test like this. Let's say truffle test. And this will, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll put it on the network and then check the address, all right? Make sure it runs. Hopefully this doesn't have errors and boom, there you go. It passes. Awesome. So if you've never written a test before, that's what it does. You just see this output here and you can see the name of our, our test, you know, contract is memory token. This is the deployment. And we say that, yes, it deploys successfully based upon the rules that we described in here. You know, we say assert, that's just saying, you know, ensure or, you know, make sure that this happens. Make sure that the address is not equal this. Make sure the address is not equal this, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You could change this uh, to something else and watch it fail. And you could make it turn green. That's the whole whole uh, testing philosophy is like, you know, red, green, refactor. It's not exactly what we're doing here, but we are adding test coverage, okay? Next, let's check for the name. But first, let's do this. So we want to fetch this memory token before we write more tests, well, let me just show you. We can add a new test for the name like this. We can say like, you know, it has a name. All right, and then we say async uh, like this and say const name equals await token.name, all right? And then we can say assert equal, yeah, name and then say memory token just like we created in the contract. But it's not gonna know what the token is because we defined token here inside this test. So we want the token to be, you know, let me just show you a better way to do this. It's not necessarily true for this one. Whenever we write more tests, it's not gonna know. So let's do this. Let's say uh, before async. Basically we're gonna create a, create a before block where we can fetch the token before every test instead of doing it here, right? So basically I'm taking this line away and I'm moving it in here. So this is part of the testing framework. We have this special function called before, all right? And we can um, fetch the token from the blockchain first and then do all this stuff. Does that make sense? Because you don't want to just do it inside of here. Uh, we want to do it before we do everything, okay? So we check the name like this. And then we can also uh, check its symbol like this. All right, boom, has a symbol. And that's just like the name test, but it's, you know, we just check for the symbol. So symbol equals token dot symbol. All right. And then if you want to, you know, pause this part of the video and then check your test before um, we run it, you can do that. Or you can also check the code solution provided in the GitHub link down below. All right. So let's run the test. And let's see if it passes. All right, there we go. Boom. Deploy successfully. It has a name and it has a symbol. So great, we're making good progress. All right, so those are the basic attributes of the token. Um, now, next, what we want to do is test. We want we want to build up the token so that it uh, can be minted. All right. Yeah, so that it can be minted and so that it can. Um, be distributed to other people. So the whole idea is that whenever you are uh, creating the token, you want it to start from zero. Like whenever the token's created, there are no tokens in existence. And then we want people to uh, collect them. So again, we're gonna have this memory token game here and it's it's not there anymore. But again, we're gonna you know match squares like in a memory game. And whenever we uh, match the squares, a new token is going to get created for us. And we'll see that in action. Okay. So we want to write the logic to create the tokens. We'll have a mint function, right? That's, that's what it is. You know, you mint the token. That's what it means to create one. 
So we'll create a new function like this. I'll say function uh, mint, all right? I'll say address uh, two, and then string memory token URI, and say public returns bool, all right? And so let me explain what this token, what this mint function does. So it accepts two arguments. Um, of course, it's a function. So we start with the function keyword. Then we give it a name, mint. All right. Then it has two arguments, argument one and then argument two. So the first argument is the address or the username, basically, of the person on the blockchain that we're going to give the token to. Um, that's what this address data type is here. All right. So it's an Ethereum address, just like you'd have in MetaMask. So this is the person. You know, two is the variable name. And then we use this underscore uh, to, as just a convention here. And then we use a string uh, for the token URI. So what do I mean by that? Well, basically, like, you know, these tokens have images associated with them. So you can see, like, this is, uh, this cat has a cat image. All right, this cat has a cat image. All these tokens have pictures. So these pictures are stored somewhere. You know, they could be stored on a web server somewhere. If you want to get more decentralized, you can store the images on a a distributed file system like IPFS, for example, okay? So that's what these images are, okay? So basically, we need a place to reference the image for each token, and that's what the URI is. So that the two will be the owner, and the token URI will be the, the location of the, uh, sh of the image that's stored, okay? So we're going to override uh, one of the functions inside of the ERC721 file here. So mint with, let's see here. Uh, actually, we're going to create our own. So we'll just say, um, do it like this. We'll say, um, you went, uh, yeah, we'll override the mint function. Sorry, I got a little confused. So let's see here, mint. All right, you can see this uh, function inside of here. It's a, it's a, it's an internal function. That's why it uses this underscore. All right. And so we want to create our own mint function that implements this, but we want to do it a little bit differently. All right. So um, how this works is it wants to use a token ID. Okay. So uh, you could give an arbitrary token ID, but we want to actually create a token ID. So I'll show you. first of all, let's do the mint function. Say mint. And we'll pass in, um, you know, two value here. This is how we implement uh, the mint function that we've inherited from. Okay, so underscore mint. I'm going to say token ID. All right, now we need to set the token ID. So we'll say uh, uint. I'll say token ID. Uh, and then we'll say, we'll, we'll say equals total supply. And then we'll say add one. Okay. So let me explain this. The... ERC721 standard, or, or at least this particular smart contract that we're inheriting from, has a total supply function. So what this does is it returns the number of tokens that already exist. So we have an all tokens array, which basically keeps track of all the tokens, <laughs> as you might suspect. And we just read the length, all right? So we can just see how many tokens exist in this array, and that will give us the total supply or the total number. So uh, we're going to use that as the ID, okay? And um, so whenever we want to create a new token, we'll go ahead and increment the ID manually inside the function so that we can't accidentally override an ID. So we'll just get the total supply. We'll add one to it just like this, all right, to get the new token ID. And we'll call this mint function, all right? So this calls the mint function inside of... Uh, the ERC721 contract here. And then, boom, that will be the first step. So the next step is that we want to set this token URI, okay? So there's a function for that inside of here too. A set token URI, okay? So um, basically, this just takes the token ID, which we just created, and then the URI, and then it sets the URI for the token so that we can see this image right here, okay? And this is exactly what we'll do for our memory token. So we'll do that like this. Say uh, set token 
URI, and then we'll pass in the token ID, and we'll pass in the token URI. All right, we'll use a semicolon, and then finally we'll just return true, all right? And then boom, there we go, all right? Uh, hopefully all this code works. We'll check it out in our tests. But if it does, then this is our complete smart contract. And now it's it's pretty simple, right? This is not an in-depth like Solidity coding tutorial because we're just using a library and customizing it. Again, I've got lots of other tutorials on my channel. If you want to check those out for more in-depth Solidity coding, uh, of course, the blockchain bootcamp goes way more in-depth in those tutorials as well. You can check that out in the link down below. But uh, yeah, this is this is it. <laughs> all we need is a smart contract uh, with a couple of variable values and then a special mint function and we're ready to go. And that really highlights how easy it is to use the ERC721 standard. I uh, use the token templates from Open Zeppelin to get started really fast creating your own token. Okay, so let's go ahead and write the test for this. Uh, we'll do this kind of quick. Um, we'll go to the test here. We'll create a new um, test like this. I'm just going to paste this in. I'll clear it out and then we'll write the code manually. Okay. So I'll clear that out. And so we're going to create a new uh, test here that, that describes a token distribution. All right. So this is just like deployment. So there's two main concepts here, deployment and then token distribution. All right. So I'm going to put this up so you can see it. And... Um, we want to talk about how it mints tokens. So first of all, we clear, declare this variable value here, let result. And then we want to say, uh, basically, we're going to call the mint function and then inspect the results. So we can say, you know, await uh, token.mint. All right, we're just going to call this mint function just like this. All right, boom. We're going to do it in our test instead of the console. And then we can say, you know, accounts zero so if you look at the top of our test here we have this accounts and variable that's injected by truffle okay and so accounts zero is going to be the first account in that array um, and that's the two value that's the person that we're creating the token for right here on the two and then next we want to uh, do the token uri okay so we'll just say like you know https colon forward slash forward slash www.token-uri.com forward slash NFT. All right, so this is just a really basic example. This is an arbitrary URL. This could be anything you want it to. Uh, I'm just going to do that for now to make sure that it works. Good. So um, we can make the first thing we want to do is make sure that it actually increments the total supply. Okay, so we'll do that like this. It should increase the total supply. So um, we just call the total supply function that's exposed by you know this smart contract, like this. We say you know result, which we defined here, equals await token total supply. All right, we just read it back, and then we want to make sure that the total supply is one because you know now we have created uh, just one token. So we do that like this, boom. All right. And then next, we want to ensure that the owner balance is increased, all right? So this person who we went to the token for, we want to make sure that they have just one token, all right? So we can do that like this, boom. So we can say it increments the owner balance. Your result equals await token balance of accounts zero, all right? That's the first account. And we say uh, this is equal to one, all right? So next, we want to make sure that the token belongs to the owner. Uh, so we'll use a special function for that, uh, like this, boom. So token should belong to the owner. So we just say token dot owner of ID number one, all right? And we just want to make sure that the owner of token number one belongs to the account that we minted it for. Okay, that's how you do this. Account zero to string, owner is correct. Okay. And then um, let's do this. Next, we want to see that we can actually see all the tokens of the owner. 
So you can get that just like this. We need to see how many tokens the account has. First, we'll call this balance of function just like this, okay? We wanna see how many tokens they have. And then we want to loop through all of the tokens uh, inside of JavaScript to uh, fetch out each individual token that the person holds, okay? So um, basically what we'll do is write a for loop in JavaScript like this, boom, to fetch out each uh, token. So if you're brand new to programming, let's just look at like for loop JavaScript. So oh, let me just pull it up. Like in JavaScript, you have these for loops. So basically you can just write this code that keeps executing over and over again for all these conditions. So here, now this is a bit of a context switch, but basically like this says for i, which is the variable value that you declared here. Um, so i is zero, and then we're gonna loop through each, we're gonna keep like incrementing i by one until you get the length of this cars array, okay? And then uh, that's how long the loop will execute for. So if you wanna you know, learn more about how these loops work, definitely go check out W3 schools. The, they do a good job of teaching the basics, okay? So we write this for loop um, that basically loops through all of the tokens that the person has. So we start at zero, and then we go all the way to the balance of, which is one. So it's gonna be one token. If they had a bunch of tokens, it would loop through all of them. And then we just increment it one by one. And so for each of those, we want to fetch all the IDs that belong to this owner. So we say token, token of owner by index, all right? That's what this function does. It's a special function provided by this smart contract. And we say, uh, you know, pass in this account. And then we want, it, this basically is going to return all the tokens from this account. You know, the first one, the second one, et cetera, et cetera. And then for each of those, we push them into this array here. And now because this person only has one token, it's just gonna return one token inside that array, which will look like this. So this is the expected result. It's gonna be just this simple array with one. You know, if they had more tokens, it could be like, you know, two, you know, three, et cetera, et cetera. But it's not, they just have one token in this case. So what we wanna do is basically just assert that this array is correct. So we'll say token IDs to string is equal to expected to string. So token IDs is the array that we created here. And then expected is this array that we created here. Okay, and so the last thing is we just want to make sure that the token URI for the token we created is correct. So we'll say token URI correct. We'll just paste it in like this, boom. So token URI equals await token dot token URI for the first token. And we want to make sure it's equal to this same URI that we created here at the top. Okay, so boom. All right, so that's all the tests we need for now because we don't need to do test coverage for all this stuff <laughs> because it's already tested inside the library that we're borrowing from but we do want to write test coverage for the stuff that we implement, right? And that's what this does. And uh, we also wanted this basic test to, you know, see that our settings are correct and that, you know, it deploys properly, okay? And the last thing I want to mention this, um, I don't think I said this at the beginning of this part, is that it's really important to test smart contracts. You know, it's important to test all smart, all software. Uh, well, not, it, it's, it's, tests often are very important in software. I'll put it that way they're extra important for smart contracts, okay? Because smart contract code is immutable. You know, developing blockchain applications is very different from developing regular applications because like once you put it on the blockchain, you can't change it really. And so you want to write tests um, to check for things extra <laughs> before you deploy it for real, okay? So that's what we're doing here. All right, so let's just save it and let's run the test and say truffle test and hopefully it passes. Hopefully we don't have any problems here. We'll just see, fingers crossed. All right, we'll wait, we'll wait. Come on, come on, come on. And boom, there we go. So it mints tokens properly. Awesome, so everything in our test passed just fine. So at this point, if you wanna play around with this, you could write some more tests if you wanted to, or you could like, you know, change these values to watch the tests fail and then make them pass just so that you see what that's like. 
But uh, from this point, we're going to move on and go ahead and start building out the client side portion. All right. So now let's start building out the client side portion of the application. So I'm going to go back to my web browser here and make sure I still have this open. Okay. So um, again, this is our web server is running here in this separate terminal tab. Uh, make sure you start your web server if you haven't already. This is npm run start. And I'm running it in a separate tab so that I can still execute my other commands here. Um, let's make sure that, you know, Ganache is running. Okay, this is the blockchain. And then uh, finally, let's just do truffle migrate dash dash reset to, oops, sorry, you'll say reset to put our uh, smart contracts on the blockchain. Okay, make sure that everything's there. Our tests are passing, but we want to put the smart contracts there. Okay, so um, the first thing we want to do is make sure that MetaMask is set up. So again, you know, MetaMask is how we connect our web browser to the blockchain. We're going to connect it to this particular blockchain that we just booted up here with Ganache. And so we first do that by, uh, you know, going to MetaMask here and typing in, uh, basically say, choose the network, okay? And you'll see the main Ethereum network. You'll see these other test networks. But you want to create a custom RPC, probably. I just called mine Ganache. Okay, Ganache. And then I type in the RPC URL, which is just this right here. You can see RPC server. Uh, boom. All right. So I've already done it. So it's going to say it's already in the list. But that's that's how I do it. Okay, just Ganache, and then boom, and then click save. And then you want to connect to it. All right. And so once you've done that, your web browser will be talking to this specific test blockchain that you're running. Okay, so again, these are all the accounts on the blockchain. So it's got 10 accounts um, that already have, that are pre-mined with 100 fake Ether. Again, this is an Ethereum blockchain. It's, it's a fake Ethereum blockchain. That's the blockchain we're working with in this tutorial. Basically, this ETH isn't worth anything on the real Ethereum network, so don't get excited. But you need to use this Ethereum to pay the gas fees or the transactions whenever we claim the tokens on the network. Because anytime you put new information on Ethereum, you have to pay gas. That's what it's for. Um, and yeah, so I've already paid some gas for deploying the smart contracts. That's why the gas has gone down here. Okay, normally they start with 100, but this is the account that... Uh, Truffle uses to deploy the smart contracts is the first account on the list. Anyways, I'm kind of going off a tangent here, but I just want to explain that. But anyways, we want to import this account into Ganache. So we can expose the private key right here. Click show keys and you'll see the private key. All right. So never use this account in production <laughs> because everyone who's watched this tutorial has seen this private key and they could steal your money if you decide to put any real cryptocurrency on here. All right. So anyways, you want to click uh, copy. And then you want to go to Ganache, okay? And then on uh, the accounts, you want to go to import account. You can click, you know, import account here. And then select private key, paste, and then click import. I've already done this, okay? So it's not going to import that same thing again, but just click import. It'll work. And then, you know, I've named my account, you know, Ganache number one. You can do the same thing by changing the account name. Uh, that just reminds me that it's the first account provided by Ganache. Okay. So again, don't use these in the real world. You know, this mnemonic is used to rebuild wallets. And uh, anybody who's seen this tutorial could steal your money if you, you know, use this for real. So don't do that. But it's okay to use it in development, right? And that's why we're doing that. So um, now we've got MetaMask set up. Uh, web browser is connected to the blockchain. But the first thing we want to do is connect our app to the blockchain. Actually, this memory tokens app, we want to wire up a connection. So uh, we'll do that. That's that's the first task, okay? Uh, but there's a little bit of work to be done in order to make that happen. All right. So let's go to the uh, source directory, go to components, and look at this app.js file. Okay, so this is the main file where we'll write all the client side um code okay um this is a react js component um so react is a framework for building javascript interfaces or user interfaces in javascript okay it's a very popular modern web development framework very popular uh for blockchain developers that's one of the main reasons that i use it in my tutorials um, lots of other web developers already know react and yeah it's some that's one of the reasons i use it in my tutorials okay so it's a component based library which basically means that um all the code is 
is contained inside of React components, which is just are these class-based components that have a name, all right? And they inherit all this behavior from React component, all right? And, uh, you know, it mixes HTML and JavaScript all inside the same files. So instead of like having a file for your HTML code and then a file for your JavaScript code, it puts it all in the same place. And you can even see like a mixture of HTML and JavaScript on the same line. That's what this like evaluation here is. So don't worry if you're like not a React developer already, if you're not much a developer, you can just follow along with what I'm doing here and pick it up pretty quickly. Like I think you'll get the hang of it as long as you just watch what I do. So that's what React components are. The other big um, thing to know about React is it has a state object with a bunch of special functions under the hood, okay? So the state object um, stores uh, like the state of the application. And that's a terrible explanation because I just used the same word to define the word. But I, let me just illustrate what that looks like and I think it'll make sense. So they give you this example here that talks about the to-do list. So if you're on a to-do list and you say like, you know, item one, all right, and then you click like add item one, and then you say item two, all right. So your website now knows about item one and item two. Well, how does it know where it is? Well, it basically has a, a, a database kind of inside the website that keeps track of these two items on the to-do list. That's what the state is, okay? So you can see this right here, this.state equals this, and then has this items right here, this items array. Well, there's an array under the hood that stores each of these items that we just added inside this text box, okay? That's what the state object is. It basically gives us a way to uh, handle like a small database on our client side application. And so we have all these special, um, you know, functions and things like that to help us interact with the React state. You'll see those in action as we build out this game, okay? So um, let me go back to the code here and introduce you to this, right? So you, this looks familiar from that React um, documentation. So we have a component here called app, all right? We have a constructor function here, which just initializes the component. It looks a lot like this, all right, this constructor right here. And then we have this render function right here that lays out all the HTML code, all right? I'll expand that and you can see it here, all right? This looks just like the documentation. Here's their render function that lays out the HTML code. You know, they put some JavaScript and some HTML inside of here and we'll uh, do the same thing as we code this example out, okay? So, um, you know, we can see that here. Boom, here we go. Inside of our layout, we have, you know, a nav bar. That's what this is, all right? So it's this, this black navigation menu up here with the memory tokens. You can see this here. All right, memory tokens. And then this brain, all right? This is an image, right, that I've already Im imported at the top of the file. And then, um, yeah. I've already got some basic CSS imported into the app. And then one thing to notice too is that we're using Bootstrap here. So Bootstrap. So Bootstrap is a UI framework uh, for building, you know, user interfaces. So you don't have to write a bunch of HTML and CSS yourself. Um, that's what we've got here. And that's why this styling looks nice without writing much. And that's why you have all these extra class names, uh, inside the markup. I know some people don't like bootstrap because it clutters up the markup, but this tutorial is really about, uh, teaching you how blockchain works and how uh, React.js works. It's not so much about teaching you how CSS works. So that's why I like using Bootstrap for these types of things. All right, so let's make our app talk to the blockchain. A few minutes ago, that's what I said our first task was. And we got a little sidetracked explaining how React works, how Bootstrap works. But if you're brand new, then you definitely need to understand those things before continuing. Um, so let's just create, let's just connect our app to the blockchain. So in order to do that, we're going to use a library called Web3.js. So this is the main JavaScript library for interacting with the Ethereum blockchain. Again, Ethereum is a protocol that we're going to use in this tutorial. And so, um, you know, we've connected our 
web our web browser to the blockchain with MetaMask, but now we need to connect our web app to the blockchain. We're going to use Web three JS to do that, right? Or sorry, this one right here. <laughs> so uh, we're going to see Web three in action for sure in this tutorial, but first we need to import it at the top of the file. That's what I did here. All right, but now we need to actually um, create a function that loads Web three in the app. And so I'm really just going to copy and paste this and that's okay because you don't have to code this out by hand. I don't personally code this out by hand. I just import it into my other projects um, because there's no reason to code it out by hand. It's the same code every time. Okay. So boom, we're going to create this function called load web three. All right. And this code right here is literally given to us by MetaMask. Like that's another reason I'm not making you code this out by hand. MetaMask even tells us in this blog post, like, hey, here's how you connect your web application to Web3. So I basically have taken MetaMask's own recommendations here and simplified it for this React app and create this load Web3 function, okay? So we've just defined it and we've connected it to the browser. But the next thing we want to do is actually um, we want to, we want to call this function. So we'll create a new function here called component will mount. And this is a JavaScript function or sorry, a react lifecycle method. So, you know, you can read more about those react lifecycle methods in their documentation if they want to like to see will mount. So they don't, let's not, they don't show any here, but you can just Google it like component will mount for react. You can read more about those. So basically the whole idea is that like while the component is being rendered, there's a special point in its life cycle where this will be true. We'll say component will mount. And whenever that's true, we want to execute this code. So in this case, we want to say await. We'll say load or this dot load uh, web three. Okay. And we'll call this function. Okay. So let's check our app and let's open the uh, console. If you want to know how I did that, you can, I think it's option command I, or you can just do right click and say inspect and then click console here. Okay. And then uh, we don't see anything yet. That's okay. Let's perform a task to ensure that web three is connected into our app. So we'll create a new function down here. We'll call it uh, load blockchain data. All right. So we'll do like this. Boom. And then we'll call that function here. So load blockchain data, we're going to define it here. And then we're going to call it here. So I'll say await this dot load blockchain data. And then the first thing we're going to do inside of here is just um, stash the web three value. All right. Const web three equals window dot web three. And then the first thing we want to do is just fetch the account that we're connected to with MetaMask and log it out to the page. So we'll do that like this. We'll say const accounts equals uh, await web three dot eth dot get accounts. All right, and then we'll say uh, console the log. Uh, we'll say account, and then we'll say uh, accounts zero. All right, so this is the web three function for fetching the accounts. And then this is the account. All right, so let's just refresh the page and then boom, there we go. So here is the uh, account that we're connected with MetaMask. You can see it here. Boom. All right, to AEC and then to AEC. Awesome. So we are rocking and rolling. We have connected our application to the blockchain. We have MetaMask connected. Um, that's a huge first step, right? Our React app is working. It's talking to the blockchain. Ch check mark number one. Okay. So next we can, um, instead of logging this out to the console, let's actually display it on the page up here inside this nav bar. So We've already got this wired up inside the nav bar. You can see this right here. So this is how React uh, implements JavaScript inside of HTML. Okay, so we've got this render function that lays all the content on the page. We've got a bunch of HTML. But then inside this HTML, we can use these curly brackets to evaluate JavaScript. So we're using that React state object, which I talked about a minute ago, right? This thing right here. 
all right, this state object to store the current address, right? And right now we just set it as a default value of zero X zero, okay? And um, inside this account here, we've just said, hey, read this dot state dot account. That's how you read information from the React state object. It's super simple. It's just this dot state dot account will return this value right here. Okay, and that's what you're seeing right here. Okay. So now after we have gotten the real account for Web3.js, instead of logging into the console, let's say uh, this dot set state, and then we'll pass in uh, the account here. Let's say accounts zero. All right, boom. And then we'll refresh and there we go. Awesome. Now we can see the actual account that we're connected with from MetaMask inside of this project. Okay, boom, there we go, awesome. All right, so that's the big next step. So now what we wanna do is um, we wanna actually connect the smart contract from the blockchain and bring it into the app as well. So this is the token that we just created in the last section. We wanna bring it into our app and load up that information and put it in the state object as well, okay? So we'll do that like this. Uh, first of all, we have imported the token at the top of the file already, all right? This is just the, uh, the ABI file. So if you go to the ABIs, source ABIs, you can see the memory token right here. So this is the Truffle artifact. It's not actually an ABI. This is not the best name for this directory, but um, you know, this is, it ha contains the ABI, which is basically just a JSON object uh, or an array that uh, describes like the functions on the smart contract. Um, it describes the interface basically so that we know like what the functions, what functions we can call inside our app and things like that. So we're going to create a JavaScript version of the smart contract, just like we did in the console, just like we did in the test suite inside our client side application. And we need two pieces of information to do that. We need this ABI. Okay. And we also need the address. So I'll show you that inside web three. Uh, let's just look at, uh, web three ETH contract. Whenever we create a JavaScript version of the contract, we need this, um, this is how you do it right here. New Web3 ETH contract. And we pass in the JSON interface, which is the ABI that I just showed you. And then also the address, that's the location of the smart contract on the blockchain. So this file inside of here for the memory token, it contains the ABI. And then it also contains the uh, address down here at the bottom, okay? Let's just sign, uh, let's look for networks, networks. Yeah, boom, there we go. So networks, um, it contains the address. Let's see here, those are the events. The address, boom, right here for the smart contract. So the ABI is at the top and then the address of the smart contract is here. So all that information lives inside of here, inside this JSON file. So we need to pull it out and then create a JavaScript version like this okay so the first thing we want to do is determine the network we're connected to with ganache because that's going to tell us the specific location of the address all right because the address could change depending on what network we're connected to so that's the first thing we want to do we want to uh, get the network id all right like this so we'll say boom so let's we'll say load smart contract so network ID is going to be web3 eth get net ID, and we'll just console log that. Okay. And so we'll go back to Ganache here and see 5777. All right. So that's the same thing that we see here, which is what we expect because we have MetaMask connected to Ganache. If we were connected to like the main Ethereum network, it would be one. But inside here, it's 5777. That's just the name of Ganache. And you can also see that here, 5777. So um, now we want to fetch into this file and fetch the address on network 5777. So we'll do that like this. We'll say, uh, you know, network data. All right, this is going to be the memory token, networks key, network ID. So we're going to do this networks, then we pass in the network ID 5777. And then we want to fetch the address, but only if it's deployed to the network. So we say if network data, all right, then we'll, uh, you know, store the address like this. 
we'll say, uh, you know, address is network data dot address. Okay. All right. So that we'll set the address like this. Okay. And then we'll say, you know, if, if it's not, if we don't see network data, like let's say it tries to get into that file and it doesn't see that, then we'll just say uh, the smart contract is not deployed to the network. We'll just alert that to the window. Okay. All right. Like that. Boom. Done. So, um, Again, in order to create the JavaScript version of smart contract, we need the ABI and we also need the address. We have the address. We can get the ABI like this, say const ABI equals memory token uh, dot ABI because that's on the top level. Okay, it's not in the network data. All right, it's right here, ABI. ABI is always the same regardless of the network, but when the network changes, the address changes, that's why we fetch the network data address, okay? Um, so now we can create a JavaScript version of the smart contract. We'll call it token. So like const token equals new web three ETH contract ABI address. That's just like we saw in the documentation here. Okay. New web three ETH contract ABI address. Okay. So we fetched both those pieces of information just like that. So now we want to do is uh, add it to our state object. So we'll say, you know, like token, we'll just do an empty object here and we'll uh say you know just like we did here this dot set state uh, account we can say this set state token all right so this is a shortcut in es6 for saying this so this is the exact same thing but we can abbreviate this since that es6 by doing this okay all right so next uh so we fetch the token smart contract it's done and then now we want to do is fetch the total supply. Okay. So we'll do this. We'll say uh, const total supply uh, equals await uh, token dot methods dot total supply. All right. And now with web three, you can't just call the function. You have to also say call. All right. So like with web three JS, um, basically like, let's just see here. Let me find the documentation. Yeah, call methods are when you read data from the blockchain. So basically you have to do the function name and then say, you know, call at the end, okay? Because if you don't do call, it won't actually run the function. It'll just return the function. So send methods, which we'll see later, are when you actually like trigger transactions on the blockchain. Um, and you have to call send at the end of those functions as well. But in this case, we're just reading the total supply. So we do call here. All right, and then we're gonna we're gonna store that to the state as well. All right, just like we did with the uh, other things. So set state total supply, and then we're gonna update the default value in our state uh, like this. So we'll do this, and then while we're here, instead of doing token as an empty object, I'm gonna say null. Okay, that's probably better. Um, so that's the next thing, and then we're going to. Uh, Let's just see here. Now we want to load all the tokens. So we did that inside the test, right? This will be very similar to what we did in the test, where you can see uh, we loaded all the user's tokens with this for loop. So I don't want to go through and explain all this stuff over and over again, because we already did this in the testing section. So I'm just going to paste in the modified version inside of here, uh, because I don't want to like, you know, just re-explain all that stuff. You can go back and watch that section if you want to. But we're going to load the tokens like this. So just say, uh, boom. So load the tokens. So this will say balance of await token methods, balance of accounts zero. So that's the account we're connected with. We do call. And then we write this for loop to go through the entire balance. And we just say, you know, get the token of owner by index, fetch the URI. And then we set the state, uh, the token URIs. That's going to be all the URLs for the tokens. Uh, we update the state like this, okay? So uh, we'll also do a default state here. Uh, we'll do an empty array as default for the token URIs. And there we go, awesome. So that's it. That's loaded up all the blockchain data into our app. Um, so again, if you wanna understand how this works, go back and watch the testing section because this is almost identical code. We're just calling it again inside our client side application to load up all the tokens on behalf of the user. So let's just go back to our browser, make sure everything loads properly. And yeah, boom, there we go. So nothing has really changed. That's okay. Uh, we don't shouldn't see any visible changes on the page. 
um, because basically, yeah, the, we just we just wired up stuff under the hood. Okay, so uh, let's just see here. Next, let's go ahead and fill out the rest of the state object. So I'm going to paste in some values here. You can just get these from the final tutorial code if you want to. All right. So these are going to be some more uh, values that we need. So we need a cards array. This is going to uh, basically list all the cards on the page, the cards chosen, and then the cards chosen ID and the cards won. You'll see all these implemented as we as we go through the tutorial. Okay. So uh, first of all. N n yeah, first what we want to do now is actually like build out the game. We've we've wired this up to the blockchain. We have um, you know loaded the smart contract. Now we want to create the game. So the first thing we're going to do is just show you how we're going to do all the cards. So in the project already, uh, if you go to the public directory, you can do these images and you can see like the tiles for the memory game. Okay, and then also like the actual. Um, you know, the, the images for them, okay? Whenever you flip them over. So first thing we wanna do is create um, an array that manages all this stuff, okay? So actually, before I do that, let me explain. These are in the public folder um, because we, we don't want them to be in our React source code because whenever we mint the tokens, whenever we create these, we're gonna reference these full URLs from the public folder. So that's, that's why I'm doing that in case anybody's watching that wondering why the images are there, that's why. If you're a total beginner, don't worry about it. <laughs> so um, I'm going to create a constant inside of here that references all the images. So it's like this. I'm going to paste this in. Um, you can get this from the final code solution if you want to. But basically, we're going to create this constant called card array that just keeps track of the name of each card and then the image location. So the image, you know, the fries, the cheeseburger, the ice cream, the hot dog, et cetera, et cetera, okay? That's gonna get stored in this constant here, all right? And um, that, you know, that's gonna reference all these images in the public folder for each tile, okay? And so now what we can do is uh, load all that content on the page. Um, so first, I uh, will, uh, you know, scroll down here and we want to uh, put all that here in this, this code goes here section. So what we want to do is create a, uh, we want to look at this card array and um, yeah, basically we want to create the card array first. So inside the component wheel mount function, we're going to go inside of there and uh, sort the cards because we want to randomize them before we put them on the page. All right. So we want to go at the very last line of this before, after load blockchain data and do this. So we'll say this dot set state card array, right? That's this right here. And then uh, we want to take this card array right here and then we want to sort it. All right. And we say uh, 0.5 minus math dot random. So that just gives it a random order um, and then, yeah, it just randomizes the cards for the memory game. And that way it'll be sort of an unpredictable, um, order anytime it lays it on the page. Right. So, uh, that's the first thing is randomize the cards. And then now all those cards are loaded up in this cards array state variable here. And now we can load them out on the page like this. So we'll just map over them. So map is a function in JavaScript where we can iterate over each item in the array. All right. We'll say this dot state um, dot card array. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to paste this in here. You can get this from the code solution if you want to. Um, but I'll explain it. So say this dot state dot card array map. And then we'll say the card and the key. So here's the key. The key is basically just something that React needs to know about whenever we implement multiple items with the same HTML element on the page. We'll say the source is equal to this dot choose image. We'll implement this function momentarily. All right, it's not, it's not implemented yet. But then we'll get each element an ID of the key. And then we'll create this on click event. So basically whenever a card is clicked, um, it will get the... Um, function and we'll we'll actually implement the card. So let's let's not let's not do this part yet. Uh, let's do that. Let's just do choose image. All right. And get some quick feedback. So um, we'll create a choose image function like this. All right. 
So I'm going to paste this in and I'll code it out step by step here in a second. So we'll do it right below load blockchain data. Let's do it below the control. Well, yeah, let's do it below the load blockchain data. Okay. So choose image. All right. So basically, we'll just say we'll start here. Um, we'll say this if state actually let's do let's just start like this let's just do choose image and then we'll start off like this this will be the basic starting point so choose image all right so basically this is just going to return all the blank cards all right and there we go boom awesome so it doesn't do anything yet we just see the board laid out on the page and yeah, that's the first feedback. So what we want to do is actually create the logic to start flipping over the cards so we can check the matching, right? So that's what this part of the function does. So I'm going to add this back in there. Again, this is in the final code solution. So we want to create this on click handler. So basically anytime we click one of these cards, we want a certain function to fire. All right, so say on click and then event. All right, we say let the card ID we're going to get this data ID right here, event target get attributes data ID. That's this right here. And then we say, uh, basically, this state cards one includes card ID to string. That, that's basically going to say, like, um, if, if you've already won the card, then don't flip it. But if you haven't, then flip the card over. So we're going to implement this flip card function. And we're going to update this, you know, choose image. So let's just... Uh, scroll up here and implement that flip card function so um we'll do that like this we'll say um choose image and then flip card it's gonna be an async function and we'll just pass in the card id okay and then so inside of here's where we write all the logic to do it so what we do is basically um we just say if the card's already chosen so basically we say this dot state chosen cards length, all right? And we see if if there's we we just check the length of that. All right. And then um we basically say this dot set state and we actually update the chosen card. So cards chosen, this state dot cards chosen, this state dot cards array card ID name. So basically that just updates the chosen cards to include this particular card that we've passed in, okay? And then also uh, we implement the IDs. So we have cards chosen and then the cards chosen ID, which is a specific ID that we passed in. So this can be a little complex to understand. There's a few different arrays going on here, but I think if you just take a step back and look at this and then look at the different arrays that are in play here, then that will make sense. Okay. So there's that. And then um, basically what we want to do is say if the... Uh, already chosen is equal to one all right basically if it already has been chosen then we want to check for a match we're not going to do that just yet we'll just we'll just leave that all right so um that's the first step all right so next what we want to do is actually implement the logic for showing different cards on the page all right so whenever we flip the card like we want to uh, you know show a different image okay so we want to go back up to the uh, that the function. I forgot the name is called. Let's see here. It's uh, choose image. All right. So we want to go to the choose image function and update that. So right now we're always doing the same image, but now we want to do some conditions and say like uh, we got the card ID right. We want to say if the card um, ID includes um, basically if 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 this is in the cards chosen already that we want to show the card on the page, right? And if not, then we want to do that default image, right? So that's that's what this does here. So this dot state cards chosen ID includes this card ID, right? Then we want to uh, put it, you know, sh turn the card over basically because we're dynamically choosing the image right here, right? It'll change the source automatically. And if not, we want to do the default, okay? So let's do that. And then there we go. Boom. So of course it's, you know, still we can turn over everyone. So that's not totally working yet. And it's not actually checking for matches, but that's the idea. Okay. So um, now we just want it to turn over two 
cards at a time, all right? So that's when we go back to this line right here. We say if it's already chosen, all right, basically if you've already chosen, then we want to go ahead and check for a match. So that's the whole idea here is uh, this, if, if the chosen cards already has one card in it and we're calling this function for a set second time, um, that means it's, you know, it's one already exists that we're calling this function the second time. Then we want to check for a match. Okay. So that's going to be our next function. And we'll just say, uh, this check for match function will be a little complicated. So we'll just, let's we'll do a really basic starting point here. We'll say, uh, check for match. All right. And then we'll just pass this in here. Make this async and we'll say, Alert, we'll say checking for match. So you'll see how that works, all right? So boom, and then boom. So checking for match, all right? It doesn't do anything yet. It just puts the alert up on the page like this, all right? But that's the idea, all right? And then we'll go back in here and we'll say, uh, we'll code this out more. So first what we wanna do is keep track of each option that we have checked for, all right? So the first is option one. So this will be the state cards chosen zero. This will be option one ID. State cards chosen one will be option two ID, right? So basically like if it's the same image, uh, then we just want to say, hey, you just clicked on the same image. <laughs> and then um, next, if uh, it's the same, if you've actually found a match, we want to tell you. So we say else if, the cards chosen zero is equal to the cards chosen one. Basically, if the card ID is the same, then uh, we'll say, hey, you found a match. All right. And then, um, yeah. And then we'll basically say, you know, this set state, uh, you know, cards one, and we'll put in the cards. Okay. And then we'll put in the token URIs as well. So let's, let's not do the token URIs yet. Let's just keep that out. And then if you didn't get anything, all right, if it wasn't a match, then we'll just say, you know, sorry, try again, all right? And then uh, we'll basically just say this set state, or we'll reset everything at the bottom, this state, cards chosen, card ID, all right? So we'll reset those after you've checked for a match. And then basically if, if you've, found them all, then we'll give you an alert that says, hey, you found them all, okay? So this is the basic functionality for checking the matching. We'll add the blockchain part in a minute to collect the tokens. But um, last thing we wanna do is update the choose image function, okay? So whenever we dynamically choose the image, like if we find a match, we wanna show a blank white square, okay? So I'm just gonna override the choose image function like this, boom. So basically we just add a new condition. So basically if the cards one includes the card ID, so if you've won it, you've collected the token, then we want to show this blank white square. If not, you know, show the card image. And if that's not even true, you didn't even find a match, then uh, you know, show the blank image, right? So that should be the basic uh, logic, I believe, for the game. Um, so let's do that. And then boom. All right. So let's uh, try to actually find a match here. There we go. Boom. Found a match. So click OK. And then awesome. So they go away. We found the match. It checked it out correctly. So that's the basic game functionality down. So there's two last things to do before we finish up this tutorial. Now what we want to do is actually, you know, collect the tokens. So whenever we find two hamburgers, we want to create a new hamburger token, all right? And then we'll do that like this. And we will also want to, we will list them out on the page whenever we find them, okay? So we're going to add the blockchain part like this. Um, so down here, inside of, uh, inside of this, like if we actually found a match and we say, you found a match, we want to change this code to look like this. And I'm just going to paste this in here, but I will explain what it does. So boom. So um, basically we do this. So we're gonna call this function on the token. So this.state.token.methods.mint. All right, this is the mint function. And it, it just, just like we did in the tests. All right, so you go back to the test. 
You can see this mint function here. All right, we're doing the same mint function, but with Web3.js. So it takes an account and then a URI. So we do the account, which is the account we're connected with to the blockchain. Then we give it the token URI, which is basically just, you know, the current location, localhost 3000, plus the uh, image right here. So like, uh, you know, this image is pizza.png. So we basically just build a URL um, right here for the URI. And then remember with Web3.js, we're, we're actually triggering a transaction on the blockchain. So we must call uh, send, all right? So my method send, all right? So my contract methods, my method send, all right? Because we can't just call it like this. We tell it who we're sending it from. So we say from this.state.account. And then uh, we wait for a transaction hash to come back from the blockchain. And whenever that's done, we're going to update the state with the cards one. All right. But we're also going to update the card URIs. So this is going to be all the URIs of the tokens we've actually collected, which is going to allow us to reload the page and play multiple times and save our cards or our tokens forever on the blockchain. Okay. So I'll save that. Go back here and um, show you on the page. So click refresh. And let's give it a shot. Let's see if it works. So let's try to find a match. All right, this may be... All right, you found a match. Awesome. So click OK. And now you should see this MetaMask confirmation pop up that allows you to claim your token whenever you find a match. All right. So click Confirm. And then boom, there we go. So I just got a confirmation on my other monitor that said the transaction was confirmed. So we've collected that token. So now what we want to do is actually like display that token down on the page whenever we have uh, collected it, okay? So let's go back to the code and implement that because we want to show all our tokens once we collected it at the bottom of the page, okay? So what we're going to do uh, is replace this code right here um, at the bottom, all right? So we'll replace this code and loop through this with the with the map function. We'll say this dot state dot token URIs map pass and the pass and token URI your key, and we'll just show uh, the tokens at the bottom. All right, it's pretty simple, just like we did up here, but even simpler. And then we'll uh, add some text to say you know how many tokens we've collected right here. So tokens collected is equal to this dot state dot token URIs length. All right, so all the token URIs we've collected, we'll show the count right here. And then finally, uh, we'll just add that last little bit of copy text at the top that says, you know, start collecting or start matching now. All right, we'll just we'll just change that text. Okay, so now this should be a complete application. Let's let's test it out here. All right, so let's click save. Go back, to, yeah, and there we go, boom. So I'm gonna close the terminal here, or sorry, not the terminal, but the, the console, JavaScript console. And uh, yeah, there we go. You can see our uh, ice cream token was saved from the last time we played the game. We actually minted that token on the blockchain. So let's do some more, see if we can find any more in action. All right, so it might take me a second to find a match here. <laughs> oh, perfect, we found another match, click okay. I uh, see a MetaMask confirmation pop up, click confirm, and then boom, there we go. We see our second uh, hamburger, you know, token on the blockchain, show on our page. So see if I can find another one. All right, so let's try this. Oops, sorry. <laughs> All right, found a match. Awesome. Another MetaMask confirmation pop up and then boom there we go so you get the idea here you know you can play this over and over again and keep collecting tokens and so congratulations you know this is a complete blockchain game so especially if this is the first time for you building a blockchain based application you know really congratulate yourselves e either way congratulate yourself you know you've seen i implement this this is actually the first time i built a game on my channel so um you know hope you liked this tutorial but that's how it works so, you know, what you can do from here, you know, these tokens are now yours on the blockchain. You can take them out of the game. You can keep them in your Ethereum wallet. You can send them to other people. And, you know, you could sell them on a marketplace, for example. These are digital collectibles that are yours to keep. And, you know, you can keep playing this game over and over again to collect more tokens. You know what I mean? It's just like you could just you could basically earn tokens that way by playing this game over and over again. 
Like maybe there's some crazy advanced incentive that you get people for playing your game. And whenever they play it, they get tokens. That's kind of the future of blockchain gaming, in my opinion. That's, that's where I think this whole space is headed. You can create these games that don't fully run the blockchain, but they have some sort of blockchain-based rewards that you can take out of the game that exist, you know, outside their control. So if you like this video, you know, where, where can you go from here? You know, you can always take this and build more features on of it on top of it yourself. Uh, I'd love to find out what you build. Again, you can follow me on Twitter and just, uh, you know, show me your project there. And of course, if you like this tutorial, and you want to take the next step. Uh, well, for, first of all, of course, always smash the like button down below, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you like this tutorial, want to take the next step, you know, learn how to build a real world blockchain application, like more than just a tutorial so that you can, you know, land a high paying job, become a freelancer, you know, build your own real world, world project, whatever, right? Just uh, click this link here, head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. I can show you how to build that real world app step by step from start to finish, right? So again, hope you like this video. Love to see what you guys build. Subscribe to the channel, smash that like button. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.